Hello, so welcome to another video. In this video, uh, we're looking at the ninth topic of the jam syllabus, which is respiration. Okay, so let's get started. We'll be looking at the the outline of the process and its significance. We would consider respiratory organ and surfaces, the mechanism of gaseous exchange. We'll look at aerobic respiration and uh, anaerobic respiration. So first, what is respiration? It is the process of releasing energy from the breakdown of glucose. And it takes place in every living cell. It's a major characteristics of life. So all the time and all cells need to respire in order to produce energy that they require. Of course, energy is used for different purposes, such as working of muscles, growth and repair of cells, building of larger molecules from smaller ones, also for chemical reactions, and so many more. So when we look at the, the process of respiration, it's actually divided into two. You have what is called the external respiration and then the internal respiration. So the, the, the external respiration is gas exchange while the internal respiration is the process of cellular respiration whereby cells take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide so on respiratory surfaces different organisms have different respiratory surfaces for example in protozoa they make use of their entire body surface in H1, they also use the skin. Fishes and tadpole makes use of the gill. Insects uses the structure called the trachea. Okay, for spider, they develop a structure called the long book. It is a special kind of trachea system. And then you have the, the land vertebrates which is referred to as i mean which makes use of um, the lungs now for an for a particular organ or surface to be a good respiratory surface there are unique characteristics they must possess first they must be thin and then usually one cell thick and that allows that gives them a large surface area to volume ratio remember our previous topic so they also need to be moist so that allows that prevents the cells from drying off and dying okay and they should be well ventilated so what that simply means is that they should be richly supplied with oxygen okay and they should be close to blood blood supply this is called vascularization so usually a good respiratory surface should be highly vascularized there should be um, rich supply of blood now if you look at these organisms and their respiratory surfaces were mentioned in detail you you should also understand the mechanism how this process takes place in insects using the trachea we have mentioned all right and how it takes place in the in the toad or frog what what is unique about the the toad or frog is the fact that they could use their gill at the the tadpole stage and also the, their skin at that stage then as they grow older they can use their mouth so by a process called buccal respiration and they could also use their lungs for respiration so um, frog actually have this advantage of breaching through their skin their, their lungs and also using the gill at um, their early phase of development okay so for fishes they make use of their their gills we have mentioned that so you should be able to draw um 
the the mechanism what i mean by being able to navigate the mechanism is how does the fish make use of the gill during respiration particularly the for example the tilapia fish all right so usually they open the, their mouth and then water goes in they lower the floor of their mouth and that allows the water to go into their the, the gill and it's usually in one direction they also have the operculum which is just beside their 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 head on both sides so you have this structure called the operculum that covers the gill so if this is to be the fish for example all right so you have the structure of the operculum that allows water to move out in this direction so you should be able to explain the role that the operculum plays in the whole of this um, system and also the gill filter that helps to to take out um to filter out debris that is in the water so that is very important to be able to to explain then in mammals then we talked about the mechanism of breathing in mama i think this desire deserves some attention so but i will quickly say that remember we have external and internal respiration so in that external respiration we're dealing with gas exchange between the lungs and the the environment and the internal respiration is the gas exchange between i mean from the lungs now and the body tissues so usually in the um, external gas exchange is divided into two. The mechanism is, is in two parts. The breathing in, which is called inhalation, and the breathing out, which is called exhalation. So for that, for breathing in to occur, the external intercostal muscles must contract. Okay, and that pulls the rib cage upwards and outward. Also, the diaphragm muscles will contract and the diaphragm moves upward. The lung volume increases and the pressure falls. So, and then when this happens, air can move in to equalize the, the difference in pressure. And during breath, breathing out is the exact opposite that takes place. So we then go back again, the same mechanism in the opposite direction external intercostal muscles relax the rib cage falls downwards and inwards diaphragm relax it returns to the dome shape it was before and then the lung volume decreases and the pressure increases and this forces the air out of the lungs so you should also know that when you inhale you are inhaling air which is a mixture of gases and within that mixture it contains 21 percent oxygen 0.04 percent carbon dioxide and 78 percent nitrogen which actually um, is inert but this um, of course this um, component co uh, percentage composition could vary depending on the environment and in case of pollution then this takes us to the internal respiration, which deals with the exchange of gas inside. I mean, cellular respiration. So it's divided into aerobic and anaerobic, or usually anaerobic first, then aerobic follows. So another name for the anaerobic respiration is glycolysis. And that occurs in the absence of oxygen so glucose is the substrate for this reaction to occur and it's um glucose is broken down to liberate two molecules of atp so this is a very low amount of energy in plant um what happened is you have a special product which is uh, pyruvic acid so usually what you have here normally when glycolysis occur you have ethanoic acid being formed and hydrogen 
in addition to the ATP that is produced. So in plants, pyruvic acid is converted to ethyl alcohol and then carbon dioxide and other organic acids. So what happened in animal, pyruvic acid is converted directly into lactic acid. When alcohol or lactic acid is the end product, the process is called fermentation. Now, this is a very complex process, but you don't need the details of how this ATP would then, I mean, these two ATP form would then be introduced into the Krebs cycle and then 34 ATP is formed and another uh, 2 ATP from the Krebs cycle and everything becomes 30. 38, if you add up the glycolysis, the ATP from glycolysis, it's a very complex process, which is be beyond the scope of your jam syllabus. Okay, so anaerobic respiration or causing yeast, of course, it takes place in the cytoplasm, not in the mitochondria. So it is the aerobic respiration that takes place in the mitochondria. Anaerobic takes place in the, in the cytoplasm. It is important to note that anaerobic respiration occurs in yeast. It occurs during vigorous exercise. Some intestinal bacteria also carry out anaerobic respiration. It occurs in germinating seed as well. So fermentation in yeast, which is a type of fungus, yield alcohol and carbon dioxide. The alcohol from this process is used to brew um, is used in beering, right? That's where um, production of beer and wine takes place. The carbon dioxide that is produced is of importance, particularly in the bread industry, where it helps the dough to, to rise. Now let's talk about the Krebs cycle, which is aerobic respiration. It involves the use of oxygen to completely break down pyruvic acid in the mitochondria to release energy. So Krebs cycle yields about 36 ATP. This is the equation. So a complete oxidation of one molecule of glucose will yield a maximum of 30, 38 ATP. That's two from the from glycolysis and 36 from um, Krebs cycle. All right. The reaction of glycolysis and Krebs cycle are each catalyzed by a specific enzyme. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a very complex reaction. I could just quickly show you this image that shows glucose as the starting substrate and how it proceeds in the process of glycolysis to form pyruvic acid and different um, energy releasing compounds are formed. Oxygen, CO2 is produced. Um, two acetyl-CoA then enters into the Krebs cycle and this produces two ATP. And going forward, there is the electron transport chain where all that substrate enters into, all right? And that produces for the 34 ATP. So in total, Krebs cycle will give us 36 and the two from glycolysis makes it up to 38 ATP in total. But like I said, you don't need all the details. Respiration in plants. Of course, plants respire by means of opening on the leaves called stomata and lenticel, which leads to intercellular spaces, which leads to intercellular spaces and mesophyll cells. So this is what the, the stomata looks like and it's surrounded by this structure called gout cells. When they become turgid, they open to allow air into the stoma Stomata pore. Of course, they can carry out photosynthesis because the 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 gut cells have chloroplast. So this is what the the lenticel looks like, and it also 
an organ of gas exchange in plant. So we look at, um, dif di there are different experiments to validate different observations in respiration. So there is an experiment that carbon for to validate that carbon dioxide is given out during during expiration. So you also have experiment that shows that um, that carbon dioxide is given out by mammals. Okay, this is it. You have another experiment that shows that germinating seed or grain utilize oxygen so there are different experiments to demonstrate different things about respiration now let us consider a few questions before we conclude this video number one question in the absence of oxygen, the pyruvic acid produced during glycolysis is converted to CO2 and ethanol. The right answer to this question is ethanol because pyruvic acid produced during glycolysis in the absence of oxygen is converted into CO2 and ethanol in plant. In animal, that would be lactic acid. So, very correct. This setup is showing one of the experiments I just um, went over. So, the question says, the most appropriate title for the setup is what? Okay. So, what is the appropriate title for this setup? So, we have a living specimen here an animal and we also have another living specimen here which is a plant and both of them releases co2 okay and this is water here okay so i think in this experiment we're trying to compare we are comparing the respiratory rate in plant and animal. Why did I say so? We have two different organisms here, and this is a typical setup for respiratory experiments. It can okay, quantitative measurement of respiration in plant. No, it can be A. Usually after six to twelve hours, there will be a rise in the colored water level in the glass tube of the animal specimen. And it will be higher than the glass tube of the plant specimen. So the experiment is comparing the, the oxygen uptake, that's the respiratory rate in plant and animal. So that is exactly why the answer is D. This is not photosynthesis, okay, and this is not just respiration rate in living organisms. It's specifically plant and animal. Okay, another, okay, the part label J is called, that's, what is J? Okay, this is your manometer. It's on both sides. So manometer is used to measure the pressure of liquid and gases. Okay, the end product of glycolysis in plant and animal is question number four. So if it's usually it will be pyruvic acid, which is common to both of them. Of course, this pyruvic acid will further be broken down into ethanol in plant and um, um lactic acid in animals but what is common to both plant and animal here will be pyruvic acid another important question let's look at question number number 14 
in insect the correct pathway for the movement of air during respiration in insect is what okay so the spiracle is the out, external surface of the of the skin in insect usually it opens into the trachea and the trachea divides into smaller tissues i mean into smaller size um, vessel called the tracheal and that takes the air into the body tissues so the spiracle so the answer would be between a and d but let's see spiracle s sac there is no no place for s sac trachea and body tissue so it is spiracle trachea tracheals and um, body tissue the right answer is a okay now talk about fish the gas exchange in the bony fish is carried out through the the gills this is the direct answer the right answer is c um finally let's look at one more question maybe question number 20 an increase in air pressure in the lung is due to in, that would be c relaxation of the diaphragm and why did i say that increase in air pressure of the lungs occur during exhalation and that is when the diaphragm relaxes all right so on this note thank you for joining me i'll see you in the next video don't forget to to like comment and share have a good day bye